so it's recording here Mikos hope all as well we're gonna do a monthly recap and whatever else that we're gonna talk about today Ahmed is with me this is our probably our first video that we may upload so we'll see how it goes so how you been Ahmed I've been good bro uh, it's been a good month of May especially the first couple of weeks you know we have the strong cycle and uh, as a result there was a lot of good plays for the next few weeks off of that hot cycle so a lot of range there's decent liquidity too so there's definitely a couple of weeks of good gains it's, it's been nice after a bit of a dry run we had some Okay, so we're going to pretend like we're not recording and we're just going to go about doing what we got to do. So what's what's the objective today you want to do? You want to do monthly recap? And what what do you have in your mind? Uh, so I think um, like the first few weeks, to be honest, like they were really good for me. But like I think like this last two weeks that kind of started going sideways on the equity curve, mm. and um, I think that's because the play started to kind of dry up, and there was a few plays where you know like I think they they kind of gapped up in that forty, fifty, sixty percent range, and. Um, they kind of looked weak off the open, but then they did a trap trap and they kind of squeezed the shorts out. And then once they got up to like 150, 140, like got to like a top end of like the range for like a neutral market, mm -hmm. then the momentum finally shifted where all the early shorts were just shorting everything at the open and covering at the close. All of that crowd kind of got squeezed out and then the backside fade started kicking in. So I wanted to kind of go over a few of those tickers and like maybe for next time like recognize and like put it part of my due diligence process where when the cycle finally starts to slow down you I kind of want to be in a position where I can recognize that okay it's probably not best to push the like push the gas unless people really get trapped and then you want to kind of step in, right? It's not just going to be three, four weeks of just fades back down. You kind of have to notice the, the cycle within the cycle. Can you elaborate a bit more? Yeah. If you have this, so I understood it, but it was not really clear. Yeah, I can pull up uh, examples. No, before the example, can you, can you rephrase it? Because I think I understood 70%. Yeah, so like um, earlier, like coming right off of the um, off of the hot, hot cycle, mm -hmm. we had um, like very easy fade back down because like things would gap up a lot. And like there was like a couple weeks of like really easy fades. And in the past two weeks, like, things would gap up a little less. And, like, they would trap in, like, the earlier part of the session. And then they would fade in the afternoon. So what was happening was I was kind of getting caught shorting a bit too early in the last couple of weeks. Because, mm -hmm. like, the market kind of trained shorts to just get sh super aggressive short on the uh, off of the open. Mm -hmm. So... I wanted to kind of go over those tickers and realize that there is like a cycle within a cycle when the market kind of transitions from hot to neutral. One thing, one question that comes to mind instantly is you, I don't know, do you look at midday runners and stocks near the first half hour the same way? So when you say think market is hot, are you also incorporating, like, we get a lot of midday runners that have, on a daily chart, like a big wick? Do you consider that as part of the cycle? Yeah, so the best midday runners kind of happen 
right off of the hot cycle when it kind of starts turning back towards the fader cycle. But, like, it seems like the last couple of weeks, like, the midday runners haven't really been popping off the way that they were at the start of the cycle anyways. So most of my troubles have been off of the gap and getting a bit too aggressive too early. And how do you... Also, by the way, uh, is this what you want to be streaming? Like uh, like the... On Discord, well, you have the OBS showing. I have the OBS showing? Yeah, so if you look at your what you're streaming on Discord. Oh. I am, yeah. I'm, the video will... My videos are obviously most of the time they're a mess. <laughs> that's why Loki, I was hoping like, yo, let's fix your videos. So, but it's okay. I, I don't... Always, always. It's really uh, but the idea is just to, to, to learn and be better. Right. Uh, how do you how do you differentiate like the market becomes from hot to non hot the number of gap ups, the number of range in price movement. So like it went up this much or the amount of volume. What are what are criteria that helps you okay we're in a hot market now and then slow? Other than the well, you know, logical things that we we can different. We can state like count like gap ups. Yeah. So I mean, like I've noticed with like when things are actually hot and like a couple days after the really really hot movement, you'll have days where like there's like fifteen twenty stocks that pop up over thirty percent on the day. And when it kind of switches back to neutral, you're looking at like four or five stocks, six, seven stocks, you know, where it's like it, it, the, the, the number of stocks that are moving slows down, the range kind of contracts. So subsequently, like the there's more attention on those stocks that are actually up on the day and since the range is also tighter, you don't get the deep fade. So the range just kind of gets gets a lot smaller that way as well. So I think that's like the key differentiator, just the sheer number of plays in the range. You said gaps up, there's 15 to 20 gap up, and when the cycle slowed down, there's 4 to 10 or something? Sorry, could you repeat that? You said when the market's hot, there's 15 to 20 gap ups. When the market's slow, it's 4 to 10. Uh, not necessarily gap ups, but just plays that are up 30% on the day. That can include uh, midday runners or gap ups. Okay. I wish we had a way to automate it. I know some guys are. And I'm hoping by us publishing this, we will get someone that's a relatively good trader, hopefully a six, six figures, mid six figure trader, that can come and contribute. That'd be a good idea. Unless you have found a way to automate this. Automate the, the cycle strength? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think, like, I have seen some people on Twitter tracking cycles, and, like, I think they do it through Python and stuff. Yes. Um, but um, I think a lot of it is, like, if you're a person that's putting in a lot of trades every day, your own trading kind of reflects the cycle to an extent, right? Like, you'll notice, like, your profit factor jumps up a lot when like the range opens up and like it's a bit tighter and your trade count drops as well when uh, the cycle slows down and like um, yeah there's there's like a few plays too like in particular like I think ENVB 
earlier in the week was like one where it's like there was just there were just so many people short and I believe it was a super cheap borrow as well. And like um it just kept trapping, kept trapping, kept trapping and then I think eventually uh it it kind of pulled the plug and faded the rest of the day. Actually, no, it didn't. It, it retrapped in the afternoon. So, like, I think when, <clears throat> like, those ranges tighten up and everyone's kind of short in the open, you get a lot more, like, vicious traps, even though they might not go, like, three, four, or five hundred percent up. They'll just kind of frustrate you all day where they look like they're rolling over, look like they're rolling over, and then they reignite, and then they'll do another clear out over the top and, like, it just kind of puts a person in like a spin cycle all day. I think if if you were asking for feedback, uh, one thing that I I think we should do as traders is the market has waves, but in a perfect world. We should be able to. You should be able to take a week off. We should be able to create a system where we take one week, two weeks off, and still get a really good pulse in the market. So if we have things automated, it's not even taking yeah. a week of the week off. It's actually how do you how do you increase your performance to be much better? How do you get a lot more confidence? Is actually by like really knowing the complete like a time where you can literally put a, like a five hour risk or a ten hour risk, and that comes from stepping away from the market. I haven't been active for the past month or two. I haven't been day trading, but there are some things yeah. that stick like a circle, and I think you've been in the market long enough. Uh, I've seen in some of your trades that you're just like, you know what, this is a trade that I'm very confident that it's going to work. And I see sometimes that it actually, the confidence, like, hits it and it hits a ticker max loss and then it fades all the way down. But I see, obviously, the results are net good, too. Um, right. But I have, yeah, no, I, I that is what I kind of want to do. But I, I still feel like, as a scalper or someone that trades like like has a high trade count like i think like even if i can just find a little bit better of an edge or just fine tune a few things that are in my blind spot that i'm not paying attention to like that'll unlock like a decent jump up in performance so like Cause like even if you look at my uh, equity curve, mm -hmm. like like even like when I it it doesn't really go sideways. It kind of slightly uptrends when at the worst, right? So like in those slight uptrends, if I can just figure out a way to like up my performance fifteen twenty percent better, and just give my profit factor a little bit of a boost. Like that's that's still it would still be good enough for me to be still on my desk every day, right? So I just have to figure out a way to like unlock gains better in that in those slower cycles. Okay, um, let's let's get right into it. Um, what, what do you what's what are we doing? What, what do you want to do? Um, I think, um, like, how do I improve performance or like, you want to go over tickers? Whatever you want. Uh, I think one thing that, caught, like, is one big thing that I can improve on, especially when the cycle kind of slows down, is just be a little bit more um, weary of like 
yeah, okay, the range might be tightened now. Uh, like, since the range is more tight now, I have to focus on the external variables a lot more, such as uh, what are the probability of fades, or it's like, if something's popping up on my scan, I should be paying a lot more attention to, does it have a history of spiking and fading? And uh, things like that, where if we have stocks in tighter ranges due to slower cycles, I can still point at those external variables that will help me overperform even though the range is tighter and the trade might be a little more crowded. But since it has the ability to retrace a lot, I should be focused in on those plays a bit more and then really properly um, pyramiding into those trades. So like one trade that I botched pretty hard was on like May 16th, MICS. The ticker was MICS. And... Um, Should I send you my trader view chart? Yeah, for sure. By the way, you don't use stats, right? By the way, do you prefer Amit or the A7? Uh, that's fine. Which, you don't care? Yeah, I don't care. Uh, do you use... I don't care. Suppose in general. Sorry? Should I send you a DM or put it in general? Put it in general. Okay. It motivates everything. You, I mean, you don't use stats, right? From what I recall, or have you, do you use, have you changed? Stats? Yeah. No, I don't really use stats, bro. To be honest, like, I've, I've, I, I've kind of been around enough where it might sound a bit arrogant, but like, I have like a pretty general sense if something has a high probability of something, you know, where, like, if there's a phenomenon that, like, let's say there's something where it's, like, there's an 80% chance X, Y, Z happens, I feel like I generally, just just through a lot of discretionary trading, I've kind of already implemented a little bit of that into my trading already. But, like, if you, if you look at this MICS chart... Yeah. Like I had, I had the right idea, right? Stock had a history of spike and fade, mm -hmm. right? Did it multiple times in the past few months, but like on this day, I got way too aggressive, way too early. Mm -hmm. So instead of being aggressive on my first few entries, I should have been just dabbling a little bit here or there. And then once that kill candle comes in, then I should be pyramiding aggressively, right? Rather than trying to just catch the top with size and then, you know, taking two, three hits like that. So how did you know to start, to start shorting around their lows? What helped you determine that? Well, so I was kind of looking left and like, almost all of the times like the stock kind of what's it called uh, topped out there and like it's hard to see on the five minute but like on the one minute it kind of was pretty stuffy and like there was shelving action but um the stock kind of went two three steps higher and like i i, I didn't give myself that wiggle room where I should have been taking like maybe a third of my position size and, and then adding later when like that harsh kill candle comes in and then pyramiding, bringing my stops lower, right? So like this was actually a max ticker loss. Um, there's actually a small green uh, 
green square just above that last uh, short. So I I got stopped out right at the top, and this one really stung because like I was like it was a great fade and like I was in pretty large too. So uh, and I made like and I made mistakes like that in the past too, where it's like instead of maybe going lighter when you're on the front side trying to catch the top and then add a bit like harder lower but yeah like things like that like trades like this on like the slower cycle and like when the ranges are a bit tighter like trades like this i can't be messing up on because like these type of opportunities on in like a more neutral market in a more neutral cycle will like make your week right so like i gotta i gotta trade a little bit smarter in, in these type of uh, markets part of it also is is kind of, it's like you're a little bit out of practice just because like things are a bit slower or they they're slowly slowing down and like being a bit of a gunslinger uh can shoot you in the foot but like yeah i need to be more careful about how i approach trading these slightly tighter ranges coming off of uh, hotter cycles okay other than cycle so i know you don't use tape like do you have any other variables that tells you is it the time of the day like what for shorting yeah no, I, I I just I trade off of one minute and I'm looking for shelving action over the top flags like both legs that are uh, failing to break out like that's what I'm looking for and then I layer that on top of uh, the stock's history of uh, fading. You don't use any. So that that's what I I mostly rely on. Do you use like daily resistance or pre-market highs? Any of these variables? Yeah, pre-market high I'll use. Um, but even if I use pre-market high, I'll treat it like a failed breakout where it's just a point I'm looking at left. I still want to see it kind of put in a false flag over the pre-market high. But like my trading is all about... Uh, failed flags um, and like bullish action that actually is bearish so that that's what I kind of rely on so like that's why it's so important for me to like not go in full size right at the top in these type of scenarios just because like it can go a little bit higher than you expect so like I'd rather just put in a starter with like a looser stop and then once that once once the stock does fail, I'd rather pyramid in hard, right? Because also there's also like when the range is a lot bigger, let's say this was up two hundred percent or even more. Obviously, my size would be naturally smaller because the range is bigger. But also, the bigger, the larger the gap up, or the the more it's up on the day the retracement's also higher, right? So, like, um, there are stats that actually show that the bigger the gap up, the more likely the close is lower than the open. Yes. So, so like, I, I'm, so I, it's, it's, I'm, I'm using that framework to kind of build my, uh, my edge. Like, I know that, like, the probability of a close lower is, uh, higher than it uh, closing green on the day. How do you use? How do you determine where your stops should be? Sorry. How do you determine where your stops should be? So, uh, my I will usually take I'll usually eyeball the range. So like, um, I'll take like the high a day, and then uh, I'll look at VWAP. And I use that, and I'll take that divided by two, and I'll use that as like a use, uh, as like a very loose guideline of like uh, the range that 
uh, it should be within. And like if it kind of gets over the knot, then and I see it kind of absorbing, and like there's lots of like wicking action, like I know that it's time to get out. But like I don't have like a very stringent uh, stop system. It's more like I'm eyeballing using the range that the stock's already displaying on the day. So like I'll take the VWAP, I'll take the high day minus the VWAP and like roughly divided by two. And like that'll be my stop. Okay, so I sent a screenshot of uh, the same thing. I'm sure you have the VWAP on it as well. So when you were short uh -huh. 230s, VWAP looked like 196, let's say $2. So in uh -huh. here, that's a 30 cent range from the high to the VWAP when you were short. So your, your stop is 15 cents? Yeah, but uh, the problem with this one, this stock, I got way too over eager because I believe this is the five minute candle, right? It's three minutes. The five minute. I'm, a, I'm a three minute weirdo. Three minute? Yeah, I if like you look on the one, it gets a little bit more messy. Mm -hmm. And like, um, I was so fomo -y on this stock where like, I was like, Anything that kind of looked like a stuff or anything that looked like a rejection, I was just kind of hitting it right away. Yeah. And, I, actually, um, I actually remember, I think I remember seeing this stuff and I was like, this is, you're probably licking your 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 lips, your chops, whatever the expression is, because that daily chart, all it shows is just reject, 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 even though it has low value. Right. Yeah, so yeah, I just got a bit too aggressive on this one and like, um, yeah, like anytime it kind of looked weak, I jumped the gun way too fast, abandoned my rules of like staying patient, waiting for the, the, the failure over the high a day and like, and I got burned for it. So it's, it, it, it's, it's my mistake at the end of the day. But yeah, this one, it's not a stock I should be losing on. They should be like, uh, it should be a big winner, you know? Okay, here's, here's something that would give you maybe like a 2-3% increased edge. So, uh -huh. as we both know, as retail traders, there's very few exceptions that move the market, and that's a different problem. And you have to really think yeah. about uh, et cetera, et cetera. But long story short, in big caps, and actually, uh, from my perspective, even in small caps, so it's like the institution flows, and maybe the guys that have some sort of an agenda in mind, or they affect the price a lot more than the retail traders do. So, without without making it into a long story, in a big cap, every five dollars, we can see open interest being very thick and heavy. And what that means is every like if it's fifteen dollars or twenty dollars, twenty five dollars or one hundred and five, one hundred and ten, those price, you have option makers that are fighting those levels. They they're taking bets on that, and in between it's not so much. From what I found, as simple as stupid as that, just kind of trading near whole and half dollar, so it's like a a dollar, dollar fifty, two dollars. Just that adjustment by itself also makes a really, really minuscule difference, but in a bigger scale, big difference too. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I I used to pay a lot of attention to whole half dollar, but I think yeah, I'll, I I think I should probably start paying more attention to it. I usually give it a little bit more attention when I'm trading front side. Uh, discretionarily and it's kind of like going into a parabolic setup mm -hmm. um, the other thing this is one of my secret sauces is there's from the open price to 30% gap up. like I have a bunch of scripts if you ever get interesting um, open price and if it gaps up either 30% or 60%, that's the turning point. So that's whenever intraday or something like that happens. I remember I backtested it 
four or five years ago or something like that, and they would kept rejecting that too. Um, I can Interesting. Oh wow, your voice got cleared up real good. <laughs> What'd you do? <laughs> yeah. Did you do anything? Did you change the mic or something? Wait, did, did the mic get worse? Way better. It got way better. What'd you do? Okay. Uh, I just switched to my phone mic. Bro, b b by the way, your mic isn't too clear as well. Um, yeah. There's many things I suck at, and I hate to say it. That's how I know I get, I'm getting old, because it's like I'm out of touch with technology. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm in the same boat. <laughs> you're still you're still a young guy, bro. You're, st you're still young. That's the other <laughs> thing I, I like about trading. No matter any other field, we would feel old. But uh, trading, we yeah, yeah. we're considered like babies, which is a, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So there's that. Yes. Um, what else? Uh, to be honest, there wasn't too, too many weaknesses that showed this month. Um, there was like a few other mistakes similar to that chart where, you know, I got in way too aggressive too early, but, um, yeah, overall, I think the real challenge is going to be the weeks ahead just yeah. because um, it does look like we are in a, we're, we're coming down, like we're getting slower and slower cycle wise. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be more important to stay very uh, diligent with risk and the stocks that I'm playing. Yes. And uh, yeah, not like, and just just try to crank, like to let the small wins add up, you know. Not try to go for any big home runs, and just it, it's just going to be all about staying aware of what's uh, what's what, what's up to come. Okay, correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, I believe you know when you had a rough patch about a year ago. Uh huh. I don't know. Like, I've, of course, you've made a difference to improve your trading and things of that nature. One thing I wonder is if the market goes to shit, whether our performance will go to shit as well. And that's just because we're so predicated, so connected to the market. Right? And yeah. Is, is this something that crosses your mind? Is... Uh. Yeah, for sure. But I, I do feel like the vast majority of like 2022, it was like, it's like the lower bound of like, um, it's like the lower bound of like performance in the sense that like liquidity was very, uh, like there's less liquidity in the entire system and like, that obviously means that like small caps are going to be hit the hardest because like people aren't speculating on uh, on on dumb uh, on dumb assets anymore, right? There's no dead. Uh, there's there's a lot less dumb money, and like obviously that's not considering if we get like a true black swan like uh, a Great Depression or a 2008. But I honestly think that's like like it was like the lower bound of like uh performance wise for a lot of people you know yeah. i i do think we're gonna come back into that middle middle era yeah i think for everybody and i always look at things as forget the market forget everybody what can i do what can i do to improve myself what variable can i change we can't change the fact that people are not putting risk on in the small cap 
but how can I prepare yeah. myself to be better prepared if we do get another week or cycle? One variable that I know for you as a trader and for me as a trader is is really tough, but there there's a there's there's a whole science and studies about this. Whenever you have three red days consistently, that's when you need to do like oh. a deep heart look and reduce our risk. And if you have a risk manager or if you whatever however you wanna think about it in that sense, that's also a really good way to make sure that we don't go not only down the spiral but it's like forces you to reflect and think. Yeah. So that's something I would I would recommend. And it's so hard to do for us because as traders we a lot of the times identify like tr traders who I am sometimes when the performance is good like we feel good but when the performance is shitty it it's, somehow takes a toll on us and it shouldn't be yeah. so, so it's really um, hard to, to when we reduce our risk that means like we have to we, we somehow get hurt emotionally and psychologically and it's almost right, like, a, right. like a negative so we have to kind of separate that mindset and I think yeah and yeah so I, was, I was just going to say Sherry, go ahead. I was just going to say we should either hold it accountable or if it's something that you want to talk about. Mike, something like that. It's something I am a strong advocate for it. And you know I have a lot on my plate that I'm trying to do. Uh, right. But I think a system where it's like three red days, if a trader opts for it, it reduces. Or if the average of past 20 green days it increases the risk automatically by 20%. Uh, those are really cool variables, so you get a much smoother PML curve. And uh -huh. just just food for thought. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely consider that. I also think, like, when the cycle gets a bit colder and there's less range, like, I know I'm going to be doing this very very closely now like over the next few weeks is like i'm gonna be like paying like i'm gonna be taking screenshots of everything now and like i'm really gonna be trying to look like is there something in my blind spot that i'm missing with these uh neutral cold uh cycle trades where you know like because like I, I honestly feel like there is things that i personally am missing that i could make uh, improvements on and like uh like some red flags that i might be missing so like i'm gonna be taking screenshots of literally everything posting it to uh daily runners and like i'm gonna be looking at those like very very carefully and, and try to see like is there like a pattern or is there like a pattern in behavior on like a multi-day uh in in terms of the cycle that i might be missing where it's like maybe when the cycle kind of goes neutral cold stocks that are up 50 60 percent they might you know they might do an extra trap or two right because all the shorts are trying to short it and like m maybe th there's more of an edge if you're just a little bit more patient so like I'm really paying attention to things like that and like just try to make small improvements to uh, slower cycle trading. Bro, by the way, I have like seven, eight minutes left. Oh, uh, shoot. Okay, I was just going to say, um, I was going to be like, let's end this video. So okay. we're going to continue the next one quickly. But if anybody's hearing this, the other thing we need is somebody that can make an automated program that takes a screenshot of movers. We can provide the variables. But all we want is to automatically take the screens and put it on this way. If somebody can help us do that, that would be awesome. Stay tuned, say subscribe. And if you know anybody that's a plus six figure, seven figure trader, let us know. Uh, we'll stay tuned for the next video.